The Batcave is the secret subterranean headquarters and command centre of the Batman, and its main series of bedrock and limestone caves extends deep beneath Wayne Manor. But the Dark Knight's den holds many mysteries, and that is exactly what we're here to talk about today. As I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and here are 10 untold secrets about the Batcave. Number 10. Fortified and fully renovated. In the Cataclysm storyline that ran through all of the Batman-related titles, an earthquake of 7.6 on the Richter scale ripped through Gotham City, collapsing many of the buildings and killing almost 100,000 residents. Now, although the more modern Wayne Enterprise-created buildings had been designed to withstand earthquakes and remain standing, the centuries-old Wayne Manor and, of course, the Batcave had not, and both collapsed in on themselves trapping Alfred in the manor and Batman in the cave. When the Batcave was reconstructed, one of the first things created was an enhanced bomb shelter that could withstand another earthquake or even a potential nuclear attack. The earthquake had changed the architecture of the cave and it now had eight levels that Bruce filled with a new library, high-tech laboratory, training areas, storage and access to his various vehicles. The Bat computer was now set on a rotating island platform and was comprised of seven Cray T932 mainframes linked together with a holographic display and a series of retractable glass maps in the computer platform. This supercomputer had Kevlar shielding to protect its systems from any further seismic activity. Retractable walkways, stairs, bridges and elevators throughout the cave provide access to each level and the whole system is powered by hydroelectric power from a river that runs through the cave. Number 9. Intruder Alert even though the Batcave is an extremely secret and secure facility with a state-of-the-art security system that would put most spy agencies to shame, the cave has been breached by Batman's adversaries on more than one occasion. In Detective Comics issue 615, the Penguin sent killer birds after Bruce that followed him back to the cave. Alfred and Robin opened the grandfather clock entrance and the birds also got into Wayne Manor. The dynamic duo finally got all the birds out of both locations, but the damage was extensive. In Batman issue 497, Bane broke into the Batcave and used everything that he could get his hands on to beat the Dark Knight. He smashed Batman into the grandfather clock, the Bat computer, and threw him against the Batmobile. The giant villain pushed Bruce into the giant penny, causing it to topple over onto him, breaking several bones. The Santa Prician beat Wayne with stalagmites from the cave's floor, and left him bleeding on top of the broken case of Jason Todd's Robin costume. Now later, the cave was also breached by Hush, but he proved to be his own downfall when he tried to escape in a whirly bat and crashed into the cave ceiling. The Black Glove organization captured Batman, injured Alfred, and intended on burying the Dark Knight alive and taking the Batcave as their own base of operations. But then they were defeated and Nightwing and Alfred rebuilt the cave. Number 8. Bats the Bat Cave is a bedrock and limestone cave, and its primary inhabitants have long been bats. American brown bats, to be exact. In addition to providing a natural early warning system to intrusion from above, their activity outside and above the cave provides camouflage for the comings and goings of Batman's vehicles. For the most part, Bruce Wayne leaves the bats alone, and they generally ignore the activities of he and his allies, as long as they don't make too much noise or blow anything up. Occasionally, the Dark Knight has used electronic devices to get the bats to come to his side, as he did in Batman issue 406, when he used a cloud of bats to hide his escape from Gotham Police Headquarters. Since Bane killed Alfred in Batman issue 77, there may be some issues concerning the bats. For one, Alfred fed them. The talented butler said that they preferred free-range, corn-fed chicken goujons, gently fried in extra virgin olive oil with chives. Mmm, sounds good. Now that he's no longer there to feed them, presumably they are back to eating insects and small rodents. Also, Alfred was very diligent at cleaning up the bat guano, as the bats were obviously not housebroken. I mean, someone has to be doing this job, right? As there could be all sorts of health problems for the bat family breathing in too much of this animal waste. Number 7. There's more than one cave. The first and largest bat cave is the one beneath Wayne Manor, but certain situations have made it necessary for Batman to create other spaces from which to operate closer to or even within the heart of Gotham City. There are now a number of satellite bat caves, each equipped for the specific needs of the time and area of their use. When Dick Grayson went away to college, Bruce felt Wayne Manor was too big for just him and Alfred, and he closed up the manor and bat cave and moved to the penthouse in the Wayne Foundation building. First appearing in Detective Comics issue 470, Batman created a second bat cave in an abandoned subway station. But Beneath the Wayne building that had never been connected to the main line. Some of the more important pieces of equipment and memorabilia were brought over from the main Batcave, and it was connected to the penthouse via a secret elevator. There were also additional Batcaves dotted throughout the city. The central cave was located under Robinson Park Reservoir, but destroyed by Poison Ivy and Clayface. Batcave South is the boiler room of a derelict shipping yard across from Paris Island, while the Northwest Batcave exists in a sub-basement of Arkham Asylum. The Batcave East is an abandoned offshore oil refinery, and there is a Batcave submarine docked in Gotham Harbor that Batman once used when Bruce Wayne was a fugitive from justice. Number 6. Little Known Trophies 
Perhaps the most well-known and often discussed area of the Batcave is the Trophy Room. Everybody knows about the giant Tyrannosaurus Rex from Dinosaur Island Amusement Park, the Penny Plunderer's Giant Penny, or the Joker's Giant Playing Card. But there are many pieces of memorabilia that are often overlooked or forgotten. These trophies range from the common, to the comical, to the just downright odd. One of the smallest is one of Killer Croc's teeth, which Batman kept after he knocked it out in a fight. He also kept Two-Face's original two-headed coin. Barry Allen brought a letter back from the Flashpoint Universe's Tom Thomas Wayne to give to Bruce, telling him how proud he was of his son. Another small trophy is the Diary of Dana Dry. The world-renowned detective not only deduced the identities of Batman and Robin, but killed himself and made it look like a murder simply to perplex other detectives. Other trophies include a group of umbrellas and a giant mechanical penguin from Oswald Cobblepot, a group of hats from several villains including the Riddler and Mad Hatter, and the Sportsmaster's Bat. The cave boasts a number of costumes, including the Mad Monk Shroud, the Red Hood's helmet, and Jason Todd's Robin costume. Thomas Wayne's Bat suit from a costume party that somewhat inspired Batman's later look holds a prominent place as well. Number 5. Dark History – The Truth Chamber the early days of the Batman comics were quite a bit darker than what readers might be used to now. In the beginning, Bruce carried a gun, and he had no problem letting his opponents die. It was a tougher time, with a much harder Dark Knight, and a unique room in the Batcave reflected that. Detective Comics issue 134 revealed a truth chamber had been created in the Batcave. It was an interrogation room that Batman had built to bring criminals to get the truth. The walls were completely mirrored, with some of them being two-way mirrors, so Bruce could keep an eye on his suspects. Overhead there was a multicoloured light, and a speaker that greatly amplified the case Crusader's voice, and in the centre was a single chair, where the suspect was often tied. It was all a very effective setup to get even the most hardened criminals to confess. Interrogation rooms in police stations are nothing new, and there are countless stories across multiple media where the tough cops spent a few minutes alone with the more tight-lipped criminals to loosen their tongues. But it's almost unheard of for a hero to build a place within his secret lair to bring criminals in for any purpose, let alone just to extract information. One can see why he turned to hanging people over the edges of buildings instead. Number 4. More than just a clockwork entrance the Batcave has a number of secret access points at various areas in Wayne Manor and from the grounds outside. The most famous of these is a stairwell, behind the grandfather clock in the main study of Wayne Manor. The hands of the clock must be set to 10.48, the time of the murder of Thomas and Martha Wayne, for the lock to be disengaged. Alternately, there are two fireman's poles hidden behind the study's bookcase, which slide out of the way with the press of a hidden button or specifically press keys on the grand piano. In Superman Batman issue 2, an injured Superman rips an electrified fence from a sewer grating that covers one entrance into the cave, although the pair are met by a shotgun-wielding Alfred almost immediately. There is also a dry well on the grounds of the estate that connects to the caves. Tim Drake and Dick Grayson had to use this method when John Paul Valley blocked all other access to the Batcave when he took over as Batman. There are also additional entrances for the various vehicles. Depending on the era, there is a hidden doorway or a hologram that covers the main entrance for the Batmobile. This is accessed via a service road that breaks off from a main road outside of Gotham City. The Batplane, the helicopter and the rocket leave via an artificial cloud covered mountain near Wayne Manor. Number 3. The idea of the cave didn't come from the comics. You know, it's hard to think of Batman without the Batcave. The two concepts just seem to mesh together so well, but it was well into the first several years of the Dark Knight's career before he had a dedicated place to hang his cowl, and the idea didn't come from the pages of a comic. The cave was actually featured for the first time in the film serial titled Batman, appearing in the second chapter, The Bat's Cave. After seeing the film, Batman creator Bob Kane spoke to his collaborator, long uncredited co-creator, and the initial scripter of the Batman daily strips, Bill Finger. He showed Kane a popular mechanics article on underground hangars. Inspired Bob added a study, workshop, lab, hangar, and garage in the October 29th, 1943 strip titled The Batcave. The Batcave debuted in the comics in Detective Comics issue 83 in January 1944. In the beginning, the underground study was little more than an alcove, with a desk and some filing cabinets. As in the film, a bat symbol is carved into the wall behind the desk, and the room is lit by candles. Over the years, the cave grew in size and scope, and became filled with the tools, equipment, and vehicles that the Dark Knight needed for his ongoing war on crime, not to mention a growing amount of colourful memorabilia from his successful cases. Number 2. The Ever-Changing Layout the Batcave has had a constantly evolving layout over the years that changes with each new artist, but has a few constant touchstones that appear in every iteration. The centerpiece in nearly every modern version of the Batcave is the Bat Computer. This supercomputer is on par or greater than those of any intelligence or investigative organization on the planet. Since the Cataclysm storyline, the computer has been made up of seven Cray T932 mainframes with multiple displays and a holographic projector. It's protected against breaches and set to immediately alert Batman or Oracle 
if any hacking is detected. Another constant of the Batcave is the workshop and garage used to build and maintain the fleet of Batmobiles and other vehicles. The current Batmobile is generally parked on a rotating platform that allows the car to be driven in and then to be turned to face outward for its next trip. The extensive and well-stocked workshop is also where Bruce and his allies create the tools and weapons that fill their utility belts. Perhaps the most famous area of the cave is the trophy room, where mementos, confiscated weapons and keepsakes from Batman's career are kept. The three largest amongst these are the huge mechanical Tyrannosaurus Rex, the giant Penny and the giant Joker card. As I mentioned earlier, there are so many more, including a tooth from Killer Croc, the Penguin's umbrellas and Joe Chill's gun. Number 1. Historic Origins the caves that make up the Batcave have had a storied history long before Batman hung his first cape there. The caverns were the home of the prehistoric Miyajani tribes, who were also known as the Bat People, having changed their name from the Deer People after encountering and being saved by a time-displaced Batman who saved the tribe from caveman Vandal Adge's blood tribe. Adge becomes the immortal who would evolve into the villain Vandal Savage. In the 18th century, frontier hero Tomahawk encountered a humongous bat said to be conjured by the Arthurian sorceress Morgan Le Fay. John Valor, the Black Pirate, a privateer and vigilante used the caves as a hideout in the early days of Gotham City's construction as a seaport. In the 19th century during the American Civil War, ancestors of the Wayne family used the caves as an instrumental stop for ferrying escaped slaves to the north along the Underground Railroad. Businessman Joshua Wayne was one such ancestor and along with his brother, Judge Solomon Wayne, they helped build Gotham City by day and helped free countless enslaved people within the caverns by night. Joshua began the construction of the huge manor house to hide his other activities. He was killed by a bounty hunter in 18 1960, and his nephew, Alan, Solomon's son, finished the manor's construction, totally oblivious to the caverns and their significance. So there we have it, friends and foes, 10 untold secrets about the Batcave. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments below if you did. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter, at Panels2Pixels, subscribe to What Culture Comics, and we'll see you next time.